So stop me if you've heard this one before. Our protagonist has been separated from their mentor slash surrogate father figure and is now alone in a hostile environment. In order to survive, they'll need to apply the lessons they've learned, pushing themselves in ways they didn't think possible. Along the way, they'll need to hunt, kill, and live with the trauma that comes with survival. Oh, and bows. Uh, bows were big in 2013. What I mean to say is, Tomb Raider and The Last of Us share some similarities, and not in just superficial ways. Both have these sequences where the player character has to prove their capabilities, with Tomb Raider using this as an opportunity to teach the player the mechanics, and in The Last of Us, reframing the mechanics for an extended section. Rather than looking at the shortcomings of Tomb Raider, or the excellences of The Last of Us in a vacuum, I want to compare these two sequences, looking at how the opening of Tomb Raider and the winter chapter of The Last of Us try to evoke similar feelings in the player, and figure out why one works and one doesn't. I'll be upfront and say that Tomb Raider is doing too much at once. Its opening has to teach the player the mechanics, introduce new fans to the character of Lara, while assuring old fans that she is at the core still the same character, while also being exciting and engaging enough to keep up with its competition. In all this, the idea of Lara utilizing all her training in a life or death scenario kind of gets lost in the mix. Take the first playable section of the game, where the player has to free themselves from a trap before landing on a piece of rebar. It's a dramatic way to start the game, but the injury is forgotten about by the time you enter the threshold of the next room, as the game has to teach you about climbing and puzzles, and then has her scrambling out of the cave in a bombastic set piece only a few rooms later. I can easily imagine the developers debating over whether or not to make the player slow down, as Lara has to stealthily limp out of the cave, but axing it in favor of something more explosive to better compete with titles like Uncharted or God of War. It's why the transition between Lara apologizing to a deer to fighting off wolves in a six slow-mo sequence is so jarring, because it's only been about five minutes. And it's only five more minutes before any and all emotion is removed from killing animals, because hey, you need a new grip for your axe and Bambi's family will net you just enough material to upgrade it. There's never a sense that Lara is grappling with any of this, as the game doesn't even attempt to put some time between these defining moments of trauma and action. Like, Lara has just staved off a would-be rapist attacker by wrestling his gun from him before shooting him in the head and watching his life leave his twitching corpse. Congratulations! The game can now introduce human enemies. Lara now experienced enough that her first bit of combat involves going into another slow-mo breach and clear section, only seconds after she's fought off the first attacker. The game seems too eager to introduce you to its systems, which I suppose is a byproduct of making such a formative scene for the character, the tutorial for the game as well. It's one of the most distracting parts of Tomb Raider's intro, that in between these near-death experiences and defining moments for the character, you're still inundated with prompts telling you that you've gained experience, or allowing you to deviate from the story to hunt for trinkets. It feels like a stagehand coming out before the lights have lowered, something that's necessary to the overall experience, but making itself known at an inopportune time. There's nothing that quite removes the urgency or dramatic tension from a scene like knowing our main character spent time meandering about collecting GPS caches and artifacts, in between almost being killed and being hunted by another group of cultists. In comparison, the winter chapter of The Last of Us is quiet. Hunting the deer at the beginning is your sole concern without any extraneous distractions like looking for collectibles or resources. Even the hut is reduced, further allowing you to focus on the hunt. And it's a great moment, coming off a of falls cliffhanger where it looks like Joel dies, and then you're suddenly here, playing as a different character some indeterminate amount of time later, whose immediate goal is so removed from the events you just witnessed. And you're free to ruminate on this as you spend time tracking and hunting. The developers don't have to worry about introducing these characters or the mechanics, or that it might not be exciting enough, as the winter chapter represents the game coming into its third act. It probably afforded the developers this extended sequence of quiet, as by this point, players will have spent time with the weapons on offer, and likely care enough about the story that the game doesn't need to immediately move on to the next action set piece. This scene goes on, though, as the deer escapes and you end up meeting David, and then end up in an impromptu fight against a horde of the infected. This is another point in favor of The Last of Us. Winter is legitimately hard. <laughs> One of the pivotal failings of Tomb Raider's introduction is that players never feel as lost or as helpless as Lara, as you can apply any and all experience with third-person shooters and turn Lara into a killing machine from minute one. Instead of Lara going from zero to hero, it's more like she starts off as a reluctant John Wick and ends off as the Predator. 
Now, I find it interesting then that the jump to playing as Ellie has such a profound impact on me, and I think evokes the feeling that playing as Lara never elicited. A genuine sense of being overwhelmed and of being unprepared for the intense challenges that you have to face. A lot of it stems from the slight alterations from how Joel plays. The way Ellie can perform silent takedowns, her lowered health, or how Ellie lacks the upgrades to her weapons and character that players will spend hours tailoring to their playstyle. Even your choice of weapons is severely diminished, so players could well be forced to rely on weapons they aren't as familiar with. Winter is also noticeably devoid of resources, and you'll feel genuinely lucky to find a few shotgun shells or crafting materials where, when playing as Joel, you wouldn't give these a second thought. Moreover, the game doesn't ease on the difficulty to account for all this. The fight against the infected that comes immediately after the hunt stands as one of the hardest encounters in the game for me, wrestling with both Ellie's reduced combat effectiveness and the near ceaseless barrage of enemies. I wonder too if some of this is psychological, that the mechanical changes are actually fairly minor, but that playing as Ellie imbues the world with more menace, with standard enemies creating a sense of unease not found elsewhere. Where I can get through the bulk of The Last of Us without much issue, I always find myself on edge in the section, a little more anxious and less confident in my ability to tackle these challenges. Exactly the feeling that I think Tomb Raider fails to instill in the player. I hesitate to play Armchair Designer and recommend changes that would have fixed the introduction to Tomb Raider, as I realized it would just be reciting everything Winter does right, making mechanical alterations to reflect the character's inexperience, making areas legitimately challenging so as to make players more on edge, removing some of the supplementary collectibles for a time, and, most importantly, providing the context needed to understand who this character is at the outset, so we can see how dramatically they've changed by the end. For everything I've said, I don't mean to make Tomb Raider out to be a terrible game. Once the game gets into its rhythm of combat and exploration, it's a tremendous amount of fun. The kind of solid 7 on 10 that has you thinking, just one more tomb, before realizing that you've continued playing for the last three hours. But I think it could have been more, something where you didn't disregard the story to focus on the strength of its gameplay, but a complete experience. I think this lack of connection to the character, and the story at large, stems from this botched opening, which is stretched trying to be everything to everyone all at once. Perhaps the most annoying aspect of all this is how close Tomb Raider gets with its intro. While I vividly remembered having to kill the deer, I had forgotten many of the smaller sections that lead up to Lara reuniting with Roth, such as having to avoid members of the island's cult, or having platforming sections show the hostility of the terrain. These felt like exactly the kinds of moments the game needed more of, but instead of lingering on them and more fully exploring a section where the player might have to outmaneuver enemies, or an extended section of tense platforming, these ideas will get a moment in the spotlight before being cast aside, the game all too eager to introduce its next mechanic, its next set piece. I don't think that the entire game needed to be about struggling to survive, but certainly for this introduction. My takeaway from all this is twofold. My pithy game critic response is to say that Tomb Raider's introduction is a microcosm for the failings of the series as a whole. A game with great elements that lacks much of a singular focus, where one room will try to convey Lara's vulnerability, and the next will have her shrugging off explosions like she's Wily E. Coyote, much like the reboot series as a whole struggle to find a single identity. I think the more interesting lesson is from Winter, where I felt overmatched by the challenges facing me. I sometimes get the feeling that when critics talk about telling the story through the gameplay, that it might bring to mind a game jettisoning all the mechanics in favor of telling its story at the player. For me, Winter is an example of a game managing to focus on the story it's telling, and telling it through its mechanics, but while still offering a demanding test of the player's skill. Something that's, for lack of a better word, gamey, but also manages to be more. Thanks for watching.